680's Richard Southern joins us now. And Richard, Canadian winter jacket maker Canada, Canada Goose went public on Bay and Wall Streets today, but they were greeted with protests. They sure were, Francis. We had animal rights demonstrators outside and inside the Toronto Stock Exchange today with Canada Goose going public. Uh, there's some anger over the duck down feathers and the coyote fur that Canada Goose uses. The animal rights activists not happy with that. PETA actually took a $4,000 stake in uh, Canada Goose in an effort for to uh, speak out at the annual general meeting. The company, though, weighing in on this, vowing to continue to use animal fur in its park. So this is going to be an ongoing debate, I think, between the company and the animal rights activists. The initial public offering went quite well, though. The Toronto stock opened at $17, closed at $21.53. The question now, Francis, is can Canada Goose diversify beyond those $900 jackets and sell maybe other products for the mm. masses? We'll have to see. Well, it is a supersized scandal. McDonald's official Twitter account went after Donald Trump today. What did it say? Did you see this tweet, Francis? This no. came out at 1022 this morning from the official McDonald's Twitter account. And it reads, I quote, uh, Donald Trump, you are actually a disgusting excuse for a president. And we would love to have Barack Obama back. Oh, also, wow. you have small hands. Ouch, wow. Francis. A tweet was taken down a couple of minutes later. McDonald's uh -huh. says that uh, the account was hacked into. You know, it's odd because Trump in the past has kind of professed his love for the Golden Arches. Last year, he was seen eating McDonald's French fries on his private plane. And a couple of years ago, he was actually in a McDonald's commercial opposite none other than Grimace. Him and Grimace were cutting the deal in the boardroom, Francis. You know, these sort of corporate Twitter accounts, they're a big target now for mm -hmm. hackers because they have lots of followers. Uh, didn't see much fallout from this. Both McDonald's and Twitter stock was higher today. Wait, is the news not that that burger was a dollar back then? That was <laughs> I, th I thought the same thing. What yeah. a good deal. It was the big and tasty, if you remember that, no many kidding. years ago. Mm. Well, sticking with Trump and food, new poll numbers are out looking at the controversial way he eats expensive steak. Certainly not a dollar. So a couple of weeks ago, he went to a, the Trump Hotel in D.C., Francis, and he went to the big steakhouse there, and he ordered, you know, a big $58 aged steak. Mm -hmm. He got it well done, which is bad enough, well done, but he put ketchup oh. on it. Not ketchup. Big no-no. And they actually did a poll on this. 66% of the people, not surprisingly, disapprove of ketchup on steak. So Trump not doing very good in a lot of polls, including the, the ketchup one. Also, you cannot put barbecue sauce on a steak. The steak should stand on its own. You know, Trump also ate KFC last year with a knife and fork, which a lot of people take issue with as well. Hmm. Very Nothing. interesting. <laughs> Use your hands. So the job market is still a difficult one, and you're looking at some of the strange professions that job seekers maybe haven't uh, even thought of or even know existed. Offbeat, bizarre jobs, but they're all true. They're actual professions. First off, Francis, you know, if the city news thing isn't working out for you, how about being an odor judge? Oh, come on. Yeah, you know, it smells pretty good, this career. You perform odor tests on hygiene products. You actually smell people's armpits and feet and breath. It's an actual career, okay? Next up, dog food taster. Yes, pet food companies use people to test their food because... Oh, no. Only, yes, only humans, Francis, can give the sort of feedback manufacturers are looking for. He's digging in. He's liking that. $40,000 a year you can make being a dog food tester. This next one is made for you and I, professional uh -huh. TV watcher. Uh, they, you know, they watch a lot of shows to mm -hmm. find out which clips can be used on the late night programs and on the news programs. Five to six hundred dollars a week for that. Professional cuddler. Uh, job requires, you know, snuggling with those who require some human contact. You can make sixty bucks an hour as a professional cuddler. Is that Finally. enough to bail you out of jail? Now, you know, it's, there's, a, there's a bit of gray area there. You've got to be yeah. careful, uh, fully clothed. Professional mourner, you can be as well. Uh, more somber job, you attend funerals. Grieve for those you don't know, you can get paid 70 bucks an hour for that. Offbeat jobs. That's friends. a thing, because that's really sad. That's sad, but you know, anything to make a buck, I suppose. Wow. Now, many of us are now working in open office environments, you know, making it difficult to have private phone calls, but a new device is aiming to change that. Yeah, so, you know, it's hard to make a private phone call. We got the shared desk, so enter this product. It's called the Hush Me, Francis, and it's billed as the world's first voice mask for phones. So basically, you want to make a private phone call. You snap on the Hush Me, and it muffles your voice to those around you, but the person you're talking to on the phone can hear you just fine. You got your <laughs> earbuds in, and, you know, you're making a nice little private phone call. Sure, you look a little like Darth Vader or maybe uh -huh. Bane from Batman, 
But after all, no one cared who you were until you put on the mask, right, Francis? So there you go. There's the hush me okay. on sale now. So for you it. see Talbot when you need to call the pharmacy next time? <laughs> Just use that. Snap it on. Good to know. All right. Thank you, Richard. Thanks.